cheap and cheerful and today it's cheap thermal cameras number three where I buy and test some of the cheapest and best value thermal cameras plus some complete and utter trash because why not in previous episodes I've tested a whole bunch of models ranging in price from a hundred bucks to five hundred bucks putting together this helpful chart with some recommendations that I'll revisit today plus I'll be adding two new models to the comparison now, firstly by popular request after I've completely bagged it out in the last two episodes some of you really wanted me to actually buy this piece of trash and give it a go now since I'm obviously going to call it rubbish there's no way they were going to send this to me for free so despite my better judgment I went ahead and bought it using my own money Thankfully, I've also got something much nicer to test, a new model from Thermal Master, their P3, which is a phone dongle with an interesting feature, variable focus. So it's designed especially for looking at PCBs and anything up close, but I'd also like to test how it does with more general thermal camera type work, the kind of stuff you might like to use it for around the house and out and about. So I'll put them both through my usual tests indoors and outdoors and provide my latest advice on the best value thermal cameras on the market today in different price brackets all that and more coming up next Alrighty, so we'll look at the MLX90640 first. I paid 43 US dollars for this, which I'm sure was a mistake. At least I scored a discount on this radioactive turd nugget, but yeah, let's unbox it and see what's inside. MLX90640 32 by 24 pixels the thermal imager literally 10 times worse than the Thor probably even more than 10 times I'd have to work it out basically just a sandwich of PCBs you can see the lithium ion battery pouch all right let's boot it up and see what she's got pretty quick uh, no boot up time no operating system I guess just a straight pipe from the infrared camera and uh yeah the picture is terrible but hey five years ago this was the only kind of thermal camera you could get unless you dropped like 500 bucks or more the fact we can say this isn't good now is because these days for not much more you can get like a goyojo with 192 by 192 pixels which looks heaps better i'll put it on the screen actually when i reviewed the gojo people commented uh, that someone on aliexpress had counted the pixels and came to the conclusion that the gojo was only 32 by 32 or something terrible and well yeah i think you can see that's not true when you compare it with an actual 32 pixel camera uh it just you can't see any kind of detail whatsoever yeah bro science i guess whatever the case in my opinion that uh, goyojo is easily still the best thermal image uh, you're going to get out of a hundred bucks anyway uh, most important question with this MLX is whether you can actually use it for something I reckon you probably could we'll do the usual tests in a moment but let's check out something much nicer first and here it is the thermal master p3 as you can see is completely unopened been sitting on my shelf a few weeks while I finish some other reviews as for its specifications, let's go over the basics while I'm opening it up. So it has a one, uh, 256 by 192 sensor with uh, less than 35 millikelvin sensitivity, which is quite good for this price. Yes, they do claim 512 by 384 resolution, but that's just their proprietary brand of upscaling. It's not the true sensor spec. 256 by 192 is what we're going to go with. That is... That is beautiful. Supports both iOS and Android, so Apple uh, and Android, no problems. 40 degree field of view, so relatively narrow, like the Thor, which helps keep that sensitivity low. But yeah, this one is designed for up close work. I do want to see if it can do kind of more general thermal camera stuff. So yeah, on paper, looking really good. Probably the only thing I don't like about this black and gold, it's a little bit garish. I guess they're heading for a particular market. I'm sure you all know exactly um, who this is tailored towards. <laughs> Okay, so test one. So the P3 is designed for PCBs and the MJX, where's the MJX? The MJX should also find this easy too out of all the potential use cases. So let's take a look at how both of these perform at their best before we try some more challenging situations. Now, my reigning champion with close-up work is the Thor 001 here because it's got this macro lens that we can click onto the front like this. So yeah, as we can see, it can look there in quite a lot of detail using that macro lens. I also thought the Gyojo, an ultra cheap $100 dongle performed reasonably well here too, considering its price. Checking out the MJX first though, 
basically it's just seeing it's just seeing a big blocky mess. You can see that there is something in the middle there that's red, that's the hottest, but uh but yeah, it's really not making your job easy, is it? Let's see how this goes. Now remembering this has got a focus ring on the front here, so I can adjust it to get the picture a bit sharper. Whoa, that's quite a decent picture. All right, so I'm recording that and I'll put the video up on the screen now. Wow, that's, geez, that might even be better than the Thor. Let's just see what happens when we get really close and we adjust the focus. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Well. Holy sh**, look at that. You can read the... You can actually read the text. That's a lot more resolution than I was expecting. Jeez, okay. Um, let's play around with some different modes. That just identifies the heat, that's pretty good. So they call this the PCB Master, and I think uh, we can all see why. Okay, so test two. As we found out in my last video, when they built my house, they couldn't be stuffed adding insulation properly along the edges and left big gaps everywhere, as we can see in this video from the Thor, which I took last time. Thor, I reckon, is probably the best value thermal camera available today for a reasonable price. Certainly not cheap, I wouldn't call it cheap, but it's certainly the best value, especially if you can pick it up on sale, but we'll go over my recommendations at the very end of the video and update my chart. Now, MLX can't record video, so the best I can do is record its screen using my phone. And as you can see, it's not seeing much. Kind of, If you get closer, you can kind of start to see maybe something, but really it's not any use at all, this thing. Switching over to the P3, which can record footage directly to your phone or your tablet. The footage is pretty much as I'm expecting, actually. I can see exactly where the gaps in the insulation are in high detail. So moving on, I fixed my shower leak from the last video, but we can still see how well they identify temperature changes in a bathroom setting, particularly hot water. Uh, first was the MLX and yeah, more blobs. Really seems like it only works within you know, five, three, four, five inches of the lens. The P3, beautiful image as I expected, but could it see splashes of water on the tiles that the Thor did? And yes, it could. All uh, right, and finally, let's see how it goes outdoors. So fourth test, we know the Thor can go for what seems like maybe 100 meters or 100 yards away in a forest. Let's try the P3. So adjusting the focus and we can absolutely see what's going on. Okay, so what's the conclusion here? Well, I'm really impressed with the P3's image quality. The focusing lens makes a bigger difference than I thought. Definitely seems to be the best at uh, up close PCB work. So PCB master they're calling it I have to agree with that medium range so looking at insulation and showers and stuff outdoors also seems pretty good so general thermal camera duties as well it's not only for PCBs as for downsides yeah there's not too much I can point out other than the kind of general things you get with dongles maybe your phone won't like it maybe you'll have some issues installing the app just kind of general Android kind of things but is it one of the cheapest or best value thermal cameras on the market today so I think we're pretty Previously, I'd have recommended the Molesi TR256B in that kind of price slot. The P3 might be even better, but it depends on what you want to use it for. So if your primary use case is looking into electronics or PCBs or anything up close in detail, definitely the P3 is going to be as good or better than most things on this list. Bonus is the P3 also is pretty darn good at general thermal camera duties as well. But if you need something that's completely standalone, so there's no messing around with phones or tablets or apps, if you need something that's ruggedized, or IP rated, I definitely lean towards a standalone device. And in that price range, I'd go for the uh, TR256B. Now, apart from those two, my number one recommendation remains the same. The Thor, either the 001 model with the full set of features, including the macro lens and the highest sensitivity, or the Thor 002, which is largely the same, but just doesn't have the macro lens. Overall, it's basically the same unit at a far more attractive price. If you need something as cheap as possible, like we're talking like 100 bucks, 150 bucks kind of cheap. Molesi TR10 and the Gojo 192A remain my favorites, depending on whether you want a dongle or a standalone device. The MLX sadly doesn't make my recommendations. I think if you spent 65, 70, 80 bucks on this, it'd be far better spring another five or 10 bucks and grabbing the Gojo. Alrighty then, that's all I've got for today. If you're considering a thermal camera, check out my other videos on the topic. I'll link them in the description. Got plenty more reviews there on various devices, a lot more detail. And remember, be cool, be kind, and I'll see you next time.